Five, four, three, two, one. Uh, I'm cold as fuck. Yo, the, yo, MK team, I, I love you guys. Thanks for hustling, it was great. I mean, you know, Tristan doesn't really show his cards, but I love him too, you know? Dude, low key, yeah. the coldest thing on that wheel was <laughs> name the stack. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that one, I started sweating. <laughs> name the stack. <laughs> I'd rather get two shots of liquor. <laughs> Uh, you Jerry, you Jerry, like four Jerry's here. At Rocky One Street Corner Philadelphia feel with the barrel, yes, the you two did. by four coming out the fire, the fingerless gloves, yeah, and there was we're a like, turn or somebody. <laughs> yo, and then the insurance guy was like, yo, this could have, this could have helped you. High. Bryce Mitchell, whoop, whoop. That's the sound of the beast. Whoop, whoop. That's the sound of the police. It might be colder than we <laughs> just. <laughs> over time, sorry, sorry, over time. Count me one more time. <laughs> sorry, I had to get that out. I had to get that out. I had to get that out. Here we go. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. It might be colder than a polar bear's toenails, but it's heating up inside the octagon. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to talk about one of the hottest, angriest, long lasting, and important rivalries in UFC history, which will be you and me. That's one. No, one people care about. UFC you and me. Two, yes, you and me, correct. <laughs> UFC 272 uh, Masvidal versus Covington. A monster pay per view, a non title. Still a monster pay per view. A rarity, but I love when it happens. You love to see it. You love to see when it's Rashad versus Rampage. You love to see when it's Connor versus Nate 1 and 2. It's a rarity. It is rare. This is the level. Morning Combat UFC 272 pregame preview. Chuck Mindenhall, Brian Campbell, Luke Thomas. I got one request for you guys, yeah. okay? I know you've Go done ahead. a few of these, but I want to put you back into the line. You, of thinking you, you, you were there as well. You were there as what well. What this needs to be, this 272 pregame preview, is a little bit of real talk. Okay. Is this like men do? Like men do, okay? <laughs> All right. I'm freezing on we this We don't roof. pull punches, although we had to get Luke's vagine covered, you know, because he was a little don't bit cold even on the this guy, This guy know? is worse than DC. He sneezed and shat himself. Yes, I don't want, you yes, know, please yes. stop. Two minutes they, in, they said BC, the references. sober version of this show sucks. That's Go back to the sauce. That's what that. the people said. Okay. Should I drink this fucking thing? I mean, you, you open better. it, baby. It's a pregame. I don't really, I, I almost never drink anymore, and my health has improved dramatically. Wouldn't know about that, but I used to love a good 40, boys. I used to love a good, tasty 40 <laughs> ounces. Oh, buddy. That was your Georgia talking, you know? Yeah, you know what it is? Two bucks. When I was in, when I was yeah. in college, what was you get? You could get a good 40 for what? You could get King Cobra for like 99 cents? That's not a good oh, 40. Yeah. That's not a good well, 40. Well, here's what I mean by good 40. Bang for your buck. For 99 cents, that would get you tore up when you're 19 years old. It's a pretty good way to get drunk in college. I like to have Better than Boone's stock. Farm. Come on. Boone, yo, Boone's Farm has gotten oh, me through oh, a lot oh. of fun nights, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's, I think it's supposed to have a I cold. haven't had one of these in like, I don't know how long. That tastes awful. Oh, man. This is going to be Do you know the, fav the, uh, the famous line from E-40, his line about uh, this brand? Uh, I'm just going to say the line of the lyrics. I'm not going to identify the brand in any way. The, the, the lyrics were, hurricane strong enough to start an engine. Mang. Yeah. And he was telling the truth. That's some hard shit. All right, UFC 272. Like, Let me take your temperature on this one. How are you feeling about this one? I have to tell you very quickly. Excited. Like, yeah. I wasn't I wasn't sure I was gonna feel about because it. Because of the main event, or yeah, the two of general. them. The two of them have. It's everything's been so ugly around a lot of the. Th it's been positive about Jorge's rise, but there's just been a lot of negativity. And sure. there, of course, is there now. But at least we get some finality to it. I'm feeling pretty good about it. I feel pretty good about it too. I feel like it's a fight that could have happened a couple of years ago. But at the same time, and I mean, you know, it, if, as long as you get it, as long as you get it. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to poo-poo on it. I'm like, as long yeah. as we get it, while the rivalry is still, and they're still, re they're still relevant fighters, yep. they're still at the top, all for it. Okay. I actually love bad blood. I Me think too. it stirs the collective psyche of watching the fight. You know what I mean? I like the whole setup for it. So yeah, man, I'm feeling the buzz of this Let one. me ask you guys an important question though. Beyond how <laughs> fantastic do I look in this best yes. line drug drug? I, you know, I think <laughs> I have gone full circle and become the cool guy I could have been at age. I had the, uh, the, did you have the eighth seat on the Delta flight out here? Uh, <laughs> Delta flight number eight? Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Um, so what I'm saying is, is the matchup fun? Is it, is it worthy to be a pay-per-view main without a title? Obviously, it is. And it's interesting style-wise, but maybe it might not be that interesting. We'll talk about that. But just in terms of the beef and what it is, is there actually a beef? Is this a thing? Yeah, there is. Or was this no, all no. sort of... Okay. You don't think so? No, no, no. I would say that I started the exact same spot you're talking about. 
because I knew these guys when they were talking like best buddies, right? Like they were always re referencing. Uh, there's like, some story about Singapore. There's some story about Singapore that they're like, oh my God, what's well, you know Singapore are the crazy times. These guys were the best of friends. They, that that's genuine. So when this started to become a feud, I actually it took me a long time. I was very skeptical for a long time. I'm still not 100% sold, but at the same time, the stuff they're saying. This is, I mean, this is pretty serious stuff. I mean, like what they're, what they've been doing and how they've know. been acting and it's moving more, gyms, okay. all that sort of thing. I mean, like, Cole, Colby coming, dropping bombs on John Jones. Colby saying, you know, Dustin Poirier's wife, I'm the father of your child. That's a different lean. This Jorge stuff has always felt pro wrestling to me. Like there's no real well, no, substance no. behind it. Remember the original, well, it has all escalated to the point where even remembering where it all came from is hard to actually figure out. But the, so what they say is the genesis was that Jorge had, re had recommended a coach right. to Colby. Colby used the coach for some time, I'm not sure how long, and that the claim is that he stiffed him. That right. is the claim. So what you're, ha you're at your task with sort of uh, asking who's telling the truth, who's not, and both guys you can imagine would have reasons for stretching the truth, yes. you know, finding ways to play up the beef. But at the heart of it, I am told that the, um, I am told that their beef is actually quite genuine. Yes, quite genuine. So Street Judas is a real, you know, Colby take against him. In I'll just say this one real quickly. I think Danny Segura, I don't want to blow up the spot. He's got some reporting coming out on this that I think is going to be okay. very informative. So. It's going to be very eye-opening, maybe even very I mean, I feel it's wonderful. genuine. Going into this, just watching that, there's like a promo. You're that just saying up. like it's escalated to now circus level where you're it's losing just, sight of whatever matters. Okay, but I've always felt yeah. it was maybe insincere, the whole idea of like, well, Kobe, you took on this character and you turned against our team, so now this is yes. about representing ATT. Like, nobody gives a crap about that part of it. If there's some, hey, you screwed over my coach or whatever, or you didn't pay up or whatever. There's I, I sticks guess, in All play. I'm saying is that foundation you know? is not as clear cut as, you know, Connor versus Habib and some of these. I don't know, man. I think super... it's, I, I get what you're saying. Like, it's definitely gone to heights where they're obviously playing it yeah. up for commercial games. Sure. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. But I do feel like there's bad blood. I feel like the it's real I'm, bad I'm, blood. Yeah, I'm told it's, it's, it's quite real. real. I'm told it's quite real. Okay, but I got to ask the, the toughest question because this is what we do at this table. I got to ask on this rooftop as I look out at the city of that. dreams and within the city of nightmares. <laughs> and how we're not How in do it? they come together? <laughs> yeah. We're and, next to it. And, yeah. you know, Sully landed that shit right in the middle. You know what I'm saying? Did he land on this side? Where, I don't know, but like that yes, shit. Yes, he did. There was, I mean, he landed on the Hudson. So you know, yes, we talk about the Jordan flu game a lot. But Sully, We've already done two Sully airline, landed Delta, that shit. No, okay. but, but my question, my question, though, from a pay-per-view main event sense, is this really a loser leaves town match, and that's underneath the real hook of what this is, rather than Divine what it loser means? Loser leaves town in this contest. Rather than what it means toward their potential, you know, winner gets a title shot or anything like that. It's it is about grudge match, yes, but what the reality yeah. it is is you have two guys in their mid to late thirties that have had some success as B-sides on the highest level. Yeah. Well, now they're just going to fight against each other, and the loser. Might not get more, back more to so thing. maybe from the Masvidal standpoint, only in the sense that I feel like he's kind of ascended to a celebrity welterweight level. Like he's already like that BMF thing didn't help things. Like he's just kind of already in that spotlight for his relevance here in the meritocracy or whatever we're talking about. Like I think this fight matters a lot. Colby, see they're both behind the eight ball in the in the Kamara Usman picture, right? Because now if if Usman holds the belt, they're both 0-2. Yeah. So they they're in a similar situation. That's what I'm saying. There's no way back really for either guy. Yeah, but if you're, you, don't you guys feel like if you're, obviously if you're UFC, you can't lose. But what I mean to say is UFC has to like this because obviously there will be damage done to the loser stock, depending on who it is and how it happens, of course. But either way, you're, you're playing with house money sure. here. If Colby beats Jorge, he's going to get, not, not the same, but will, that will boost his overall sure. popularity. And it's still, he's still a relative. More so, though. It, it, it That's makes, all I mean. He could still try to lure everyone from Nate to Connor and, to Dustin. And, and it that. makes another fight for Kamaru, who wants to make money even more attractive. Conversely, if Jorge wins, well, first of all, that's a super validating yes, win. Yes. And you're already Jorge fucking Masvidal. And so you like, wonder if it's dude, like... the UFC wins either way? Especially okay. if it's as big. I mean, obviously, the Ben Askren knockout is like one of those most viral things in 2019. But like, if he's able to do anything like that, where he's just a dramatic finish and Good he gets it done. Good transition, because let me ask you. Okay. 2019 Jorge Masvidal, it, it opened our eyes. It, it reaches new levels of ceiling of what we thought he was possible. He was the damn fighter of the year. He was in my top 10 pound for pound after the BMF fight. I mean, I never thought he would get there. But that Jorge Masvidal is not coming back through the door ever again. That creature has left this earth. I I, I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's unfair to say the following. <laughs> no, no. Here's I'm being truthful. All right. Answer the question. You know. Yeah, I will. If you look at someone like who's a great hitter in baseball, even your best hitters, they have long stretches where they just are not hitting the things that they would normally hit. They're missing. But then they'll have months where they're average, and then they'll have months where they're fucking killing everybody. 
that was Jorge's moment in yeah. the season and the career where he was fucking killing. I, I, I mean, I don't know. Like if he when Andy Ramirez went dude, to the Dodgers and he took was, all those roids and was dude, you can, like, he's for 800. the same reasons you can be in a slump, the same reasons you can be on a high. And he was dialed in. He was focused. He was ready. He he, he was in command of everything. All I know is the cosmos was shining on him for that 100%. year because you look at that. I think it's a perfect storm. He he had the till fight. It was a big thing because Askren actually went out there and was kind of the star, the substar of that show. He had the he hosted the Q and A. He was kind of looming over the whole festivities, thinking he was going to get Till. He upsets Till, but that wasn't the transfer in London. Moment. And then had in the, London, and then had the and moment. He has the, the moment soda. backstage, that becomes viral. And then so when the Askren wheel got into that, it was like okay, now we've got a big fight, so and I'm, he's able to do that to Askren, and then follow that with the BMF. It was like the perfect storm. Would you the guys, reason you can't do it is because you can't replicate that so again. So I'm telling I guess. you, the last time we've seen something like that, I mean, we've seen it in elite guys just go to another level. Connor in 2015 and 16 just went to another freaking level. But is this almost like Tim Tebow winning a playoff game with the Broncos <laughs> or Jeremy Lin no. lighting up Kobe? I to mean, an extent, it is. It, to an extent, like what it's I'm saying. Really, I don't. I don't what I, I mean, Tim it's Tebow, not that really? he well, wasn't. Tim Tebow's a competitor, man. It's not Come a direct on, I'm a Broncos comparison. guy. I watched that year. It's yeah. not a direct comparison. He had a little comparison. bit of the, the Jesus vibe. Is it sacrilegious to tackle him? But what I'm saying <laughs> is this. You know, Absolutely. it's a moot conversation because it's not him anymore. But that guy, it was what it was. Like it's some radical departure. Why would it be a radical departure? Because the difference between oh shit, this guy's a title contender. He's pound for pound top. 10 he's a crossover star in one yeah. year or previously he's that really funny journeyman guy who i respect because he's a brawler and he can win at any time yeah. but Y'all he's gonna juggle wins hey, yo, ah. yo we that's the thing about this table bro it's a truth serum this yes, table sir. is an <laughs> altar of you i mean you got to come clean that is you got to come yeah. direct you got to come say what's on how, how long does okay. he go what's, what's the so who's running the clock before he talked about his dick and balls 10 minutes <laughs> i'll take a walk down there and have a conversation oh you know i and i fond of myself <laughs> but yes, uh, Tim Tebow. That's correct. I, I don't. Well, I don't. I don't really agree with that at all. I don't. Jorge I just wanted to Tim hear Tebow, your. Really? No. no it's, Tim not Tim, a, it's not. It's not. Exactly. Tim Tebow was I just a, think was a, a good athlete. And that's all I'm saying. What we're saying was there was a there was almost a, a divine power lifting him to a level a moment we never thought was possible. Can he still win this fight without being 2019 miles? Here's what I'm going to tell you. That's no, no, I asked, no, dude, dude, no, 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 I asked no. you a question, bad. Yeah, and I'm going to answer it by by saying the following. You're asking the wrong fucking question. The question is not, can he get back to 2019? The question is, does he have another, perhaps different wrinkle on heroics left in, right. in his that career? Right, that is true. You, everyone thinks he's just going to regress to the mean, and he might. No, By no, the no. way, Colby is favored to win and should be favored to win. I'm, I'm on board. But everyone thinks that, like, Masvidal's magic is just sure. gone. I, I think it's a little presumptuous. A little, now, he did get KO'd badly against... He Kamaru, did. and he that's did. an X factor, like how he recovers from all of that long term. But okay, at the know. very least, it's that's a, a storyline. We're gonna find out exactly where he's at. He if, seems quite motivated. Win or lose, who knows? Maybe he still gets, you know, a Nate rematch, a Connor fight. Like he's still trying to plant seeds. The thing is, well, one, back but. in the day when Uriah Faber was at his biggest moment, it's not the same as Masvidal, obviously, but at his biggest moment, people wondered if he's spreading himself too thin. It's almost like that. I feel like he ascended to a level that was like, okay, I've always wanted this recognition. I've never gotten it. Now I've had this, ma these mag this magic year, and he has done his victory lap. Now you're just like, okay, is he the same guy? Can he retrieve that? Can he do that savage side from 2019? That's what I'm wondering. Like, can he retreat? Can he go back? Because you know, he's, got a, he's got a liquor at Mezcal company. He's been traveling the world, you know, like glad handing and doing that sort of thing. Can he get back to that? Because I feel like, if anybody bought into the satin sheets a little bit, you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's hard. I think he also launched some, launched uh, some business ventures right away. But the other part That's is true. it's just hard to be in his position. You've waited this long, your window to act. And Jorge's not stupid. He knows his window sure. to make the money with, with the fighting ability he has left. He had to act right away. And so to that point, he had that Requerdo I mean, thing. And it's the dude, the it. dude was fighting on the streets in South Florida. Yeah. Like it, it, to say that he doesn't have the fight in him is ridiculous. Okay, then, I'm then, just wondering if he can return to that. That's then all. Then let's look at this now from the standpoint of the stakes. Well, hold on. One clarification. Because of the KO or because of the success? No, just because of the success. Okay, okay. I don't really believe he, because he's been beat in his career. Like, yeah. he's lost well, tons of fights. But it's never affected him long term. Okay. And th this would be a little bit different. This would be a departure. These are really good guys he's fighting. Right. I get if you don't again, you know, look at it the same way I do, that it's sort of like he's not that guy anymore and he'll never be that guy. And unless he can get a bit of that magic or that that I don't know that energy and that that anything can happen that feeling back I don't know if he can beat Covington 
but does it matter? Is this actually a must win for Jorge, even for Jorge's brand? Is it, you lose or leave talent, like I said, is there, I mean, is he Teflon now, where we know, we know where his ceiling might be, but we still want to enjoy the ride if he wants to fight these super fights. What do you think? I mean, I, I think that he's- It'll hurt his stock. It'll I hurt, think so too. Stock. Like, he's one of those guys that was contingent on that magic. It wasn't some broader thing. We saw him suddenly, he was right under our noses for years and years and years, but we saw him and invested in his character, the guy he was, you know, the whole Scarface thing, the suits, the South, South Florida, like when the story came out, the Cubans coming over in rafts, all the stuff he was talking about, we bought into it because he was winning and he was where he's at. I don't know where that goes if he loses three in a row. I think it will hurt yeah. him more than it hurts a guy who's like as big as Conor McGregor or something like that. It's going to hurt him more. I would say that um, a loss would be bad. It would be bad. Um, the only thing to think about long term is whatever it does to his stock and whatever it ends up putting him if he continues fighting past that. But by the way, he, you know, Jorge's long in the tooth. I'm not sure exactly what his age is. I think close to close to 38. And he um, knows it. I mean, he knows he's close. He knows it. He's not. Yeah. He's got. He's pretty. The, he knows he's probably like yeah. I got Nate. And yeah. I got Connor. Jorge, and I might be it. Yeah. Like. You, can, you can say whatever you want about Jorge. Being dumb has never been an issue. He's a smart guy. So that's not the thing. What, what I do what I want to say is I go back to this point. Anyone who's followed my career has probably heard me say this a million times, but it's just so illustrative of the point I wanted to make, which is the most popular fighter in Bellator history is Kimbo Slice. And if you really yeah, understand Kimbo Slice's career and all the things he went through, including boxing and then the scandal and then the losses and everything. And by the time he got to Bellator, he was still pulling 3 million people live on Spike, dude. Passions for people that fans love. And you can put Jorge on that list. They die hard and slow. So it, point, I, it, it will affect him. It okay, will affect so him. So on the flip side, before we get into more of the, what will this look like? Who wins? How do they win and all that? We know, you know, Covington's got a certain blockage in trying to get a, a third fight against Usman for the title, even though you could make the case that he won the second one. And it was closer than a lot of people maybe thought or scored it originally. What does this actually do for him, pay-per-view brand-wise, if he comes out here and beats Covington? And it's a, I'm sorry, beats Masvidal, and it's kind of like a trash-talking yeah. badass thing. Does this catapult him to another tax bracket as a brand? Could we see him, you know going after Poirier and going after these kind of super fights and just being a brand and not worrying so much about what that welterweight title would do to define his career. Let me interject here if I may okay. for just a second. Here's what I think is at least possible and worth considering as Jersey City's finest honk at each other and fist fight and fist fight wheelies. and fist fight for baloney in the street. Okay, here's what I want to say. It looks like the UFC, they may have already done it or they're going to pull the trigger on a fourth fight between Moreno and yes. Figueredo. What I think that could end up doing is making them being a little more willing for immediate rematches, which have already been all on top of, but as a part of trilogies. You've got a few cases now, not just Max and Volk, where people are just bumping up against each other one more time. Dude, if Colby beats Masvidal, uh, he'll get all that popularity. Who else would you like him to fight to prove he needs another fight with Kamara? There's, it would be idiotic to put someone else in front of him. Strike while the iron's hot from a commercial standpoint mm. and a ranking what, standpoint. do a trilogy? Do it right back no, to no, back, no, no, do it no. right back There's to back. There's one mountain he'd have to climb first and the man's name is Chimaya. Shit, get the fuck out. <laughs> I'll, I'll stay on this well, route. Well, that, you, know you know what, okay. Okay. He's coming, okay, you know what, you know what, if Chimaya beats Gilbert Burns, you're right. Anything, you know, that is people true, have that true. reaction to me where at first they're like, I don't know how to read this guy. I don't want him in my living room. I don't want to accept him. When I met you, I know. I mean, I don't, like, the rankings don't matter, but like he's, well, Burns is that in the rankings. It would make complete sense if he beats and, and not him, just like, that, like the guy that Burns is. You beat a guy like yeah. Gilbert Burns. You have to be very good. You have to be very good. Yeah. Um, anything about Colby? Like he's kind of dropped the character. Now he's still abrasive. He's still going after John Jones. He's still he still sticks with the character when he needs it. But it's not like politically comes, driven comes anymore, right? Comes out, comes I don't know. It's I, more just I'm an asshole. Is that where he's going now? No, I think those guys have both leaned into, um, you know, the favorable, uh, and for the, for them probably quite positive and beneficial. Uh, recognition that comes from conservative and other forms of right-wing media like they get on big podcasts they're on Fox News like they probably like all that stuff um, <laughs> I'm just wondering if that's Colby, so crazy Colby can line. fully pivot away from so he, he's still he's still quite visible like yeah. dude like I was a little like who's gonna who's gonna get more cheers they asked me on submission radio and I was like well Kamara I saw him on hot one so you know let's not lose sight of the fact that he leveled up and I knew like Colby would get cheers dude it wasn't even close like Colby yeah. smoked him and I remember when that when he was first doing his like, hey nerds, fucking Luke Skywalker dies in the end. People were like, man, go fuck your life, man. You love that though, by the way. Those was, spoilers. That was my favorite thing. I know. When he was telling when he was when that. he was in rate, and I pissed me off for a second, but then I was like, God damn, you would read the mentions, and I would. I used to do a radio segment. This is true. I would wait oh. for Colby's tweets, being like, yo, Spider Man does the blah 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 blah. 
at his mentions, that was good stuff. at his mentions, I would read his mentions on air, and they'd be like, "Man, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? You ruined my life giving me these fucking Spider-Man spoilers." Just destroying the lives of incels everywhere. It. Kid brings it. It was I don't know fucking. If you saw the John Jones Google. thing. I don't know if you saw that. Dude, he is. I saw that. I saw that. He's brutal. He, he's, Dude, he's doubling down. He's like, one this time, is This is true. So I'll tell this all here. One time Colby sat down with me. I did a live remote show in. Dude, did he uh, have chicks there that he paid to appear? Oh no, no, no. He, I did a live Those remote. Were, I did a live remote show brutal. in Brooklyn for like some event that was there. I forget which one it was. And uh, he came through as one of the guests. And this was right after he had gotten back from like one of the Brazil stints. Like when it was a real big problem for him. When everyone was like, man, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? And I was like, dude, do you get death threats? He like showed me his Instagram DMs and he was like just showing, yeah, oh. all the dudes. It was just rows of people being like, Man. like, go fuck your life and I hate you and blah, 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 and all kinds of stuff. It takes a special kind of guy to he deal with that. Completely so many people in the sport want to be loved. They want to be loved. They can't handle too much of that. He's proven that he can just keep taking that. You know? I, I asked him, I was like, how do you deal with it? He was like, you know, it's this, this is this is what works. This is the path he chose. Chuck, I like asking hard questions uh -huh. that, you know, I got to break character and get real and answer them. I want to make you look into that camera and Which give real talk. Dude, you sound for like all, an aggressive porn director. Yeah, yeah. All, I, I want you to make, I want you to make <laughs> eye contact. <laughs> gonna, it's perfect. I mean, <laughs> try not gagging while you make eye contact. contact. <laughs> all right, come on. You know, keep that same intensity as you're looking at me, Chuck, all right? <laughs> Don't gag when you're looking you at me. You know, what I was going to ask you, for Jesus. all we can talk about that, oh no, we're excited about this fight and the personality clash and the rivalry and the blah, blah, blah. It's, it still has the potential to be five to nothing, Colby on wrestling. Oh yeah, yes, it this does. fight's gonna suck yes, the horn. I mean, true or false? Okay, Chuck, well that's the, so that's the yes. thing. <laughs> so, so that's really the uh, there's a drawback to the whole thing. I think that that's it. If anybody like you, you're a guy who watches fights analytically, and I think anybody who's a diehard can sort of project how this fight should play off. Right. You know. So that's really the thing. But remember, and th this is again, can he recapture this magic? Can he do this thing where he did the Askren? Like Askren was a big favorite going into that fight. You know. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is, once a guy does it once, you're not sure what he can bring. Plus, former training partners, they've, you know, they're teaching each other stuff. What does he you know, know about him? Other. Like, what does he know about him? The intimacy and the, I don't know. Ben has always made a point like, okay, the knee was nice that put him out, but like, what if the fight had gone longer? What would have happened? Oh, yeah. You and know, that's a great point. And everyone, and everyone, and everyone, and everyone if it misses, McGregor, you can say that about Aldo a lot of McGregor, listen, what would have happened? Yes, he, listen, he could have gotten knocked Especially out 30 one. seconds later. Like, there's no, there's no way to guarantee, but you would at least be real curious to test that hypothesis. Like, like yeah. Mitrion versus Karatanov won. I bet it's What would happen if they didn't way, do simultaneous yeah. dick kicks? But that's, but, that's, <laughs> but, that was, but that was Jorge again, and his element completely sure. commanded the whole process. Okay, but, so, ha so but how having does... watched, like, Usman, like, right? The first Usman, uh, Colby, uh, the, the first I got two Usman, jackets on. Masvidal fight, six takedowns, 17 minutes of control. It's very easy to imagine. It's very okay, easy to imagine Okay, so how do happening. we get off that script? How does Jorge Masvidal, because I have a little bit of fairs, and I know I always hold the first Usman fight against Masvidal, which he waited to take it last minute, and he, you know, won the negotiation, and he got it on his terms, except <laughs> you know what happened. Now, this is where real talk comes in again. Now we're going to have a fire. Masvidal chose not to take the risk of getting knocked out and to lean on the excuse of, I didn't have a full camp. And yeah. He tried, but he couldn't find an opening, and he Dude, went the he distance. He took the fight on a fucking. I'm just week's telling. I mean, well, I'm just, I'm just going to well, let sort you of. know. Well, sort of. He took it on week's He was kind of training, but not. And yet. then in the rematch, we saw even how much better Usman was, yeah. and he just deposited him uh, there. How, especially if 2019 Masvidal is not coming through that door, Rick Pitino, and he's just not. How does he avoid? <laughs> 50 45 because of wrestling at this point in his career Rick do you have to fight a, do you have to fight a one round especially mindset that I'm going I was, in the so when i was talking about you know his level of celebrity and kind of his business ventures and how much he's actually committing to this to add that commitment to the wrestling game to figure out how to if that's colby's but i'd be shocked if colby's not trying to play this kind of game with him that's the thing right like doesn't like, we don't have the pride to go this isn't working I'll be willing to take the chance of getting gassed out and stopped to try to go for this knockout. Yeah, he might. I, I don't think he's he's not going to play it safe. I don't think he has the 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 push to do that necessarily. And I'm not saying that he'll be a serial offender of this. The question you have to ask yourself is: Can Colby be baited into making mistakes? Right. Maybe. I'd be Maybe. surprised. Would you though. say that's his best skill outside of the wrestling? Is that he's pretty darn poised and doesn't make? I think so. Yeah, but against this guy. <laughs> It's a little bit different, right? I mean, some guys make mistakes. Weidman against Rockhold, Sonnen against Silva. Dude, like, if, Mas if Masvidal is losing, he's going to be chirping in yes. Colby's ear. 
Like and he's probably gonna break. Yeah, I, I think Maswell's at the point where he's just about the money. See what you're saying? He's spread thin. He's got business. He's trying to set up what's next. He's trying to set up. He's already tweeting negative stuff at. Kobe doesn't really to need to take chances. Fight. And in fact, he's got a tons of evidence to not take chances if he's smart enough. And and also, like, it's a statement to be like, I'm not gonna play your stupid game. It's a statement. It's a statement to be like, I'm going to beat you the way I know I can beat you to show everybody that I can beat you that way, you know? Okay, so do you have to go overboard if you're Masvidal in round one to establish the threat that that double leg will be met with force if you go for it? Um, do you have to oversell that? Do you have to plant that seed and draw a line right here and say, I, I will I mean, if I'm Masvidal... I'm you know the thing is... At the right moment, <laughs> though, if I can lock that in, if I can get that full grip. See, you know, people like, I like this type of grip. It's, it's, it's a little more Eastern Euro, but if I can get that Bro, thing, I can't, I'm not, I'm, I'm, listen, I can't. <laughs> Wait, I, you're cold, you're, you know. Ugh. <laughs> well, Maybe drink this shit. This is fucking bullshit. Okay, you so got this. Chuck, you got this. I don't know what this is, but. Chuck, you're a, you're a little yeah, bit over, more reasonable. Over. Okay, here yes. and rational here. Yes. How does Masvidal oh. get Covington off script? How? How, Chuck? Well, I mean, honestly, that's that's that, to me that's Fuck kind of the that. that's kind of the drama of the fight, right? The drama of the fight, like, dude, well, how do people drink this shit? If he tosses in the sink, we gotta catch it this time. Oh, I think his. I mean, honestly, like, kind of contemplating his chances. I want to see him just rip the body. I want to see him rip the body, like, boom, boom, do some of that sort of thing, and see what happens from there. You know, a good jab. A good jab can create problems. He's always had a pretty good jab, uh, and he's going to have to scramble. He's going to have to go for submissions. He's going to have Jorge's going to have to be in that mindset where I'm going to just chain attacks together. I know. I'm going to just I'm going to make I'm going to be a fucking mosquito in your ear. If at he all catches time. him at any point, where it just kind of even staggers him, he better capitalize. That's what I think he's best. He, bet he, is. He got, he, Colby's tough as shit, man. Like Kamaru's he dropped is. him now. I know, dude. Times. He had a broken he, jaw. I wanted dude, to keep Colby He's fucking to, tough as nails. Does Colby have to put an exclamation? If this ends up turning into a one-sided fight, which it very well could be up to start and stay that way. I feel like that's. Does the Colby have to put a to, for his thoughts. own future? Does he have to put a stamp on that? The, are people going to get bored of, like, if this looks like Colby versus Robbie Lawler, are we going to be like, eh, I don't know if I want to. He hasn't this. had a ton, ton of fans. Robbie Lawler has a totally different style of defense where he's rolling with everything and he's covering and he's half of it's landing, yeah, half of it's He was doing that up. on his back against Colby, you know? I, I, but also standing, too. Like, go back, there was long stretches where Colby was just depositing rain on him and all he could do was just kind of yeah. try to find, you know, a, 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 a you know, spot outside of the rain. So... But Jorge doesn't fight that way. Jorge's, Jorge's going to look for something much more. And you would guess he has more explosion left than Lawler had at that point. He's got more threat of a KO. He's got more kickboxing threats okay. in certain ways. Yeah, yeah. Who's yeah. Um, who's who's jujitsu will ha will play a factor. Jorge Jorge's got great jujitsu, but Colby's just Colby's not going to play jujitsu. He's going to play defensive shutdown on him and it's put the, the put the work in to move. So it's that pace and the and just the action, right? Like that he brings. Well, and remember, his actually he doesn't he th uh, most of his strike numbers he doesn't throw a ton of ground and pound. Like obviously he's getting a little bit better about that. Yeah. But historically it's been a bit of a weak point. But what he does is he just kind of stays busy with it and then changes positions. Yes, he does. Yeah. He will actually let you move a little bit just to keep you in this sort of spider this game with him where you're just playing it on his terms a little step behind. So it's not like this devastating again to use the rain analogy downpour. But the guys they're trapped. Once they get in, they're trapped. Jorge's main number one goal is cannot get caught in that gator roll trap where he takes you under. What's Colby's age? Is it 35 or is it uh, let me, I can tell you here all my motherfucking because this iPhone. is this, have we seen the the best of Colby because Colby I, you know I'll give him credit there's a couple times in his rise to the super elite that he surprised me legitimately Colby's like, 34 so he's okay. 34 so it's not I don't know. You gotta go, but it's you gotta go at the same time. You gotta go. So he's had he's, he's he, had two shots at the mountain. Has top. he leveled out? Because he you could argue he that. could be the champion right now. Uh, I haven't seen it. I, I haven't think seen that I yet. think a don't you go ahead. But a third fight to me, super intriguing. Is yeah. there evolution super to his striking potentially that he could show in this fight that we haven't seen? I don't think so. I don't think he thinks he needs it. To be honest, I really don't think he needs it. But we'll see. I mean, like to me, he does one thing well, and that's just kind of get in your face and keep throwing like. Uh, you know, volume and then the threat of the takedown, all those types of things. I, I think that we're going to see that exact same thing. Just pace, action. I think you're right. This is so different pressure. than the Usman fight because of the levels. These are the type of opponents where he mods with all that. At the end of the day, Covington says to himself, I could still just straight up gas these guys out. My whole game plan, I think he if my whole that. game plan is aimed at gassing him out, I will succeed against an Usman 
you're not going to succeed. And don't you're get end caught. Up needing to do a 50-50 fight. Don't get fight. caught, right? Like, you know don't I mean? get caught. I mean, literally. If they, you know what I mean? And if it ends that way, they'll end the fight still bickering at each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they'll have to get separated at what the end of the fight. What are you going to do if they hug each other and like, hey, man, we did it. We sold this whole thing. And um, what are you going to do then? Loop? Well, they might. People, have, people can resolve. Yeah. Dude, I, you know, someone made a point to me one time. He's like, hey, you should always pay attention. Like, when two wrestlers finish a match, including the Olympics, like, whatever. Yeah. They'll kind of like passively shake hands by by default or whatever, but they never hug. They never like yeah, they yeah, never yeah. like bro it up. He's like in MMA, it's almost like a religious experience that you had with a person versus. That's a, that's a good point. Everyone's kind of just. So bitter. look, it depends would, on what the, where they take each other, what depth yeah, exactly. they take each I'm other. I'm just saying, like, I, I would believe that they text each or DM each other along this training camp. They don't. I don't think there's the hatred. I think it's yeah, like, but, like, hey bro, let's yeah, work together and make. Yes, yeah, are they the calling together? each other bro or pussy? Which one are they doing? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You know. I don't know. Do you have a? Do you want to say anything else about this fight? Uh, it's not in Miami. And uh, funnily enough, uh, Danny Segura, actually, I'm going to give him another shout out real quickly. He spoke to Jorge and asked, why isn't this fight in Miami? Because there was, remember, there was yeah, going to be in Jacksonville and the whole thing, or whatever, it was rumored that way anyway. But it makes sense. You have two guys from Miami yeah. who are yes. very well known, like one of the two of the more well known fighters who happen to have a rivalry, blah, blah, blah. Miami has always been a tough market for them. For all of combat. Yes. Sports. In fact, there's a video of Joe Rogan and Jeremy Horn after the last UFC event there, they were being asked about the crowd, and Jeremy Horn did not have nice things to say about the people <laughs> of Miami. I've never been to a show down there. Huh? Yeah, okay, but here's yeah. the point I wanted to make. You would imagine they could have sold pretty well down there, and the reason why they didn't have it is because Jorge wanted a cut. He wanted a cut because he thinks he can bring people out and was entitled to money and didn't get it. And I will say this, and dude. Dana's like, you're trying to get leverage on me. Let me say that. Let me ask you this, BC. You're the boxing guy. You may take this for granted. A lot of MMA fighters don't end up getting to have fights where they're from. They have to now. A lot that of them move true. to Las Vegas, yeah. so it kind of go, works that way. And the lucky few get to do it. And they might get one in their career. They, yeah, so yeah. they get one. Like or they, one they, day, Bryce Mitchell get that that oh my God. that little rock homecoming. <laughs> well, no, no it's serious, dude. If, if Bryce Mitchell was a boxer and it, there was a homecoming, yeah, he would go to fucking Little Rock, and it would be a thing. Like when we were there for Javante, Javante coming back to Baltimore. Or how about Terrence Crawford, Noma? They made that like a thing. Oh, yeah. Like that was exactly. Rocking. So don't you feel like it's maybe a bit of a missed opportunity to not put this in Miami? I kind of feel no, like Dana it is. don't care, and to to to. The point of what we're saying historically in boxing and MMA, look, South Florida doesn't, they don't move product. You know what I mean? Okay, but dude, those two, those two could sell out, dude. Don't you think? I don't, I, yeah. Seriously? You have to remember, like, Dana's got deals with different arenas. Like, Houston, why are we going to I understand, but this Dana's is what I mean about deals. having fighters having control and other ways to make money. If there was a little bit less control and fighters had a little bit more say, you would see a, this is an A tier fighter, obviously, an A tier fighter being able to, on occasion anyway, on occasion, be able to monetize their popularity in their home markets. You don't see it that much. Safe to say, if this fight was in Bellator, it would be in Miami. <laughs> it no, might it, be. It'd be, in Th- it'd be in Thackerville. Dude, oh, Stri- oh Strike Force Miami was a wild event. Yeah. Um, uh, true or false here? When, you know, when I conceived what this episode might look like, feel like, you know, taste like, I was like, we got to get that oh, dude, they're barrel. Back. They're back. Oh, yo. Yo, we got a camera on this? Here they come. <laughs> Are those four wheelers, man? I don't know. Dude, those guys, you'll see groups of 100 or more in DC. It's like G.I. Joe back in the day. <laughs> they roll. There's a motorcycle so, game. <coughs> Hold on, let me get let me know who it is. All right. <coughs> they roll in these gigantic packs. In Baltimore, they call them 12 o'clock boys because they get, they'll, they'll get, they get all the wheels all the way like this. this Yo, this I wanted that Rocky One street corner Philadelphia feel with the barrel, yes, you did. the you two did. by four coming out the fire, the fingerless gloves. And there was we're an like, intern or somebody. <laughs> Yo, and then the insurance guy was like, Yo, this could have, this okay, could have helped I'll you. High. We should have. You know, you would, you would be a little bit more masculine. Yes. You would have much higher T. <clears throat> my bona fides. Also, be harmonizing dude, right now. We're I, singing. Dude, compa- to compare to you, I'm <laughs> in the masculinity back. hall of fame, motherfucker. Dude, dude, compared dude, to you. Dude. Yo, what about our fans that are like, Yo, Luke can act tough and he's a sergeant, but he was in the reserves. What about Dad, Spider? What about? Right? Yeah, I was in the reserves quite proudly. Huh? Spider Rico, you remember him? Yeah, Spider Rico. Yeah, whatever was happened. Beta can. All right. All right. Yeah, I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. Like, that's oh Rocky. yes, I did. Yeah, that's that's the people. Okay, that's yeah, well, the, the people. Well, the people are stupid. Okay. They don't know what they're talking All right. about. All right, um, I'm yeah. happy to be on the roof, just you know, nonetheless. But uh, do you guys? I mean, would you say you care about this co-main event at UFC 272? Oh yeah, uh, I do. This is the lightweight fight that got moved as he moves over there to go <laughs> probably masturbate for the third time this shooting. All right, um, <laughs> leave that in there. I'll talk to you, Luke. What's happening? Uh, so. RDA, Rafael Dos Anjos, the man with maybe the most impressive resume in terms of the difficulty that he has endured across multiple challenges and weight classes, taking on Rafael 
Fazeev? Fazeev. Yeah, like I know you're you're just Fazeev. trying to get Bisping in the Hall of Fame as fast as you can, oh, but RDA's got a better resume, bro. Okay. Oh, he does. Oh, sure. give me that argument. RDA over better resume. Are you kidding me? I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. For the camera's sake, I am in no way saying you are wrong. I'm saying the, make the, the case. The number one thing against Bisping, which we had fun with on on the high court that we filmed and all that. And, and Chuck made a ruling, and I respect that. But the number one case against Bisping is although he had that great late twilight, and you got this Andy Silva win, and you've got the championship sure. win to cement it, what he's thoroughly lacking throughout his entire career is great A minus, A plus wins, right? It's, it's sure. anytime he stepped up to that level, he would consistently lose. He's got some really good B wins. You look at RDA, he's got a lot of A wins. He's got A wins. He's got a lot. He's got A losses too. And, he fought everybody. But, really and, but also look, and he's a former champion, which takes away any kind of like, well, hold on, dude, he never won yeah. the gold. And he is just as much revered and loved like an Anthony Pettis or Frankie Edgar for yeah. having taken on everyone in his era yeah. and going out of his way to do it. And Luke, as we always yes. say, even right now in his twilight, he's trying to recreate his body to you figure out how to make weight. You made a case about Jeremy Stevens one time. You said, this dude is an OG who fights everybody. Yep. He always answers yeah. the... Look at what RDA has done. Look at the, like, I don't know if you got his I'm list. I'm going to read his like, list. Like, read this list. This it's, is it's, like, it's, it's the is, craziest list I think that exists in the UFC. Completely batshit. Jeremy Stevens, Tyson Griffin, Rob Emerson, Kyle Bradley, Terry Edom, Clay Guida, George Sotaropoulos, Gleason Tebow. This is all consecutive. Kamal Shalarus, Anthony Njikawani, Mark Bocek, Evan Dunham, Don Cerrone, Khabib Nurmagomedov, Jason Hyde, Benson Henderson, <laughs> Nate Diaz, Anthony Pettis, Don Cerrone. He won all of those fights. Eddie Alvarez, Tony Ferguson, Tarek Safadine, exactly. Neil Magny, Robbie Lawler, Colby Covington, Kamara Usman, Kevin Lee, Leon Edwards, Michael Chiesa, Paul Felder. Get the fuck and out And he was here. supposed to fight. Are this you mom, shitting me? Makachev twice before Dude. it was fell through. And he's supposed to fight Conor McGregor for the I know. title. Uh, it's, it's insane. Nothing but difficult assignments. It's insane, Nothing. man. It's, it's insane. out of this you know, fucking it's like, world. It's the one guy that is And look who he has song. to fight now, this fucking Terminator. <laughs> I, it's like the this. most thankless uh, job. His job has always been thankless. Most of those guys you're mentioning are either in their prime or close to it or on some kind of weird streak, or he's went up to welterweight and it's like, you know, it's it's a crazy matchup he's that way. He's really good. Yo, he's really good still. Like, he's really dude, how good. Is, dude, uh, serious question. How is he not more shop-worn? The, uh, because it, even in fights where yeah. he's won sometimes, they've been like dog fights, There's man. some well, of these, we talk about Overeem, Big Nagra. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Like maybe long-term we're going to see all the damage, but, like, they've just been through wars. They've been through hell. I thought we'd see it in that Felder they, fight, this last one. I thought we'd see the version of him. And they recreate themselves. he wasn't. They, you know? I mean, talk about, remember when, when RDA used to have to make a lightweight, the reason why he, he th thinks he lost the title was because he, you know, he almost killed himself trying to make weight. Yeah. But now he's going back up and back down, and he's reinventing new ways to physically get back down to give himself a chance. Um, this... This, it's one of those resumes that's like, no one talks about it. Gegard Mousasi has oh, yeah. something yeah, close something to that. Close. But, but maybe RDA's, big, dude, RDA's. But RDA has the big belt on top of that. Dude, I mean, damn. I, I no, thought what I was going to ask. No, I'm just gonna, he's, yeah. he, th this kind of thing where this guy guys do this, it's, it's going to be more common in MMA than it is in boxing just for a long while. But that kind of stuff, you I may, you may never right. see that again. You're right. You, oh, I was going right. to say, 100%. Yeah. They play. He should come out to Last of the Mohicans. People who take that kind of risk, that's an old You know, they asked hard too. questions in the 90s, and Paula Cole asked, where have all the Cowboys gone, <laughs> right? Yeah, he's there in Brazil, one. baby. Dude, dude, dude and it's, I'm not talking about Donald or even, you know, dude. Cowboy Oliveira. I'm talking about the cow, like the guys that ride in, you know, and they're looking to take your bear and your yeah. women on the way out. You know what and I'm saying? And let me tell you, man, it's an intriguing fight in the sense that he's got a legit shot, man. I think he's got a legit shot of actually doing something in this fight. I feel like... We've seen Fiziev, Fiziev, Fiziev. Fiziev, a guy Fiziev. corrected us when we were at the award. Yeah. He said it was Fiziev. Fiziev, okay. Well, Fiziev, like, has shown he's a, guy, he's a guy you should be paying attention to. Five straight wins. He's looked very the good. The Brad Riddell win, legit. The Brad Riddell, th that Riddell win was, like, ridiculous. I thought that he looked amazing. That, that fight was mesmerizing, the way they were striking with each other. But I'm like, this is just, I feel like this is a true litmus test for him. Like, I feel like RDA, man, everybody's fought, everything he's seen, where he's still at. Going back to lightweight, like, you know, looking the way he did in his last fight. He's RDA's a live like dog, so man. He's well a live rounded. dog. You know I'm always talking about Robert Whitaker, so well-rounded. RDA yes. is pretty fucking well-rounded, and, okay? And 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 is a, and just can hit. What, what, he changed Anthony Pettis. That was such a beating he handed out. Now, Pettis was still good and still had great 100%. moments. But, like, but dude, you go back and watch that fight. Dude, Pettis got. got see 185 Dallas. Uh, that, R, RDA, oh. RDA just let him have it. And I don't know if he's capable of that anymore. But he is still pretty well-rounded. However, dude. Fazeev yeah, is. is a fucking Terminator. Okay, he when, is a 
He is. Uh, here's a true, another true or false. Win or lose, RDA's next fight should be Conor McGregor. Win or lose. Oh, man. Okay, if he beats Fazeev, he's he would be, like, in a good spot at that yeah. point. I mean, that's a, that's a solid top seven-ish win. And especially given the first one and play out, right? So like, that would be one because they were originally going to make that one. That's where, where Connor showed up in the Escobar shirt. Um, <laughs> uh, or whoever it was, I don't know if it was an Escobar. Um, and then if he loses, you take on Connor coming back. Because well, it would make sense from a true meritocracy. I tell you, if I'm Connor, Connor, that's a tough fight. That's a tough fight. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure. That one. That that ain't I'm not sure the UFC would put him there. Man. That ain't Diego Sanchez. That's a tough that's ass not. fight. Because, dude, Fazeev is, 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 is a bruiser, and I think that RDA is going to take, you know, probably take some abuse here, and he's taking a lot, but even then, I still yeah. think he's got a left. He, he'd be a problem for Connor. Yeah. If Fazeev wins, does this prove that lightweight, which was at like a career best in depth and star power, but then went a step down when Habib walked away, Connor and Tony suddenly aren't the same, you know what I mean? Do you think, you know, if yeah, this new wave that we is, are reloading properly at I think this moment so. with, with with Mahachev, with now Mahachev, with now Fazeev? Fazeev. I mean, I, I think it has. It's reloaded, man. I was looking at the rankings um, earlier today. I mean, there are a lot of killers still in that division. Some of those guys are starting to clock out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But at the same time, you have that new blood coming right up there, man. It's it's as intriguing as ever. How good. Is Gaethje Oliveira gonna be? Oh, oh man, be great! Oh my god, gonna be great! They're like, here's this can filled with sex. Drink it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll say this: I think if RDA beats a guy like Fazeev, first of all, that would just be fucking incredible. A, it's difficult, and B, just at this stage of his career, you know, I feel like all these guys lot. with V in their names, like they're just not losing right now, man. They're just they're on yeah. fire, dude. They're the on Blake fire. <laughs> they're trying to speed us up through the rest of this. I know, man. I know, I know, I know. We gotta get cold. Uh, okay, any other fights here on this card? Well, <laughs> the, the card's um, interesting. Let's go right to Edson Barbosa. Oh yeah. How the hell are we feeling about this all right so wait now just in case you're wondering bryce mitchell whoop whoop, whoop. that's the sound of the beast whoop whoop that's the sound of the police bryce mitchell will bear arms if we go to civil war i just want that to be <laughs> and he'll run much, with their Hawaii, like does that change your prediction and, and I, it's like dude i'm not fighting you can have arkansas i'm not i'm not, fighting. <laughs> I'm not trying to take it from you i like how he just had a pistol in his fucking waistband um, um chuck where is Edson Barbosa right now? Like, where is he in this? You know what I'm so saying? So we were just talking about RDA. Edson Barbosa may be one of the closer seconds that we've ever seen. The dude has fought a who's who as well. Took a, I don't took a bait in against Habib. He took did. A, yeah, he yeah. did. Edson Barbosa is just so one of the one of the greatest highlight reels. If you just stacked his highlight reel, yes. the problem that Barbosa's got is that there's just a blueprint you can follow at this point, and he has tightened yes. a lot of things up and then drop that weight. But fundamentally, the way through the pressure game, and obviously there's a little bit more than, than just raw pressure, but um, the, you know, a lot of coaches have got guys in, in positions to make that work. And so you, you, that's, you, that's yeah. a hard thing to overcome if you haven't overcome it at yeah. this stage. So Bryce, but is Bryce Mitchell but, the guy to really Well, that's the thing. Barbosa that's where a little different. Right, right. He's, dude, on the feet, Barbosa could light sure. him on fire. On the ground, conversely, Bryce Mitchell is one of the best grapplers in the UFC. Yeah. Um, I went to ATT to interview Masvidal before the Askren fight with Brandon Wise of CBS Sports. And we're, as we're interviewing him, around the corner in the main sort of cage area, you're just hearing, whop, whop. Yeah, yeah. Like over, like heavy ass fucking strike. Like you're like, oh my god, who is hitting that? And you're thinking like, is Arlovsky here? Like, what am I gonna go turn Barbosa? on? It's Barbosa kicking, he can, and he's not he's even putting crazy. a lot of into it, dude. dude he's, he's just like some warming of the up, and you're just like, the UFC history. Oh man, shit, we really have no understanding of what that shit dude, feels like. You know? Were you either of you guys at the Cosmopolitan when he fought Tony Ferguson? Because it's this tiny room. I mean, oh. thousand people. I get in this room. I love that venue Dude. for boxing. That must have been great for It that was night. amazing because you're mentioning the sound. Oh, was you this could... the Pearl at the Palms? No, no, it was oh. at the Cosmo. It was the, the only Cosmo, one I've Cosmo, ever been sorry, there. The yes. Cosmo. I don't know. It was a weird, it was a weird one uh, because they did three fights in three days. Remember, this was like an international fight week and this oh, was yeah. like a weird thing. But, uh, Dude, you could hear the, the sound of each one of those, and that was a war. And, in fact, you know, we were talking about Edson Barboza. Like, he's only been submitted twice. One of them was in that fight with a Darce, but he was in a war, you right. know, and the other one was Cowboy Cerrone. Bryce Mitchell's going to try to bring that to him, and he's going to dictate that if it gets to the ground. But I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Bryce I feel Mitchell like Blue? Bryce Mitchell has not faced a guy with that sniper ability. That's true. You know what I mean? Have so we seen we'll Bryce see. get figured out yet since this run he's been on? I'm trying to imagine. Have we seen no. Bryce Mitchell lose? No. He's no, still he's running. Un, he's undefeated. He's, he's still, undefeated. He's still riding. He's, he's, he's crushing moment. the game right I'm now. I'm thinking of Casey but, Kenny. But he's leveled up, and Edson Barboza is a tough call. Take that pistol and put it at your temple. All right. They're going to kick us out of here. So quickly. All right. All right. This card is unbelievable. Uh, Kevin Holland taking on Al Cowboy Alex Not a bad fight. Same thing with, you know. That's a much better matchup for Holland. And then it opens with Sergey Spivak, excuse me, taking on Greg Hardy. And your boy. 
Greg right. Hardy. Greg Hardy, still on main cards. <laughs> this nice. prelim main event. Unbelievable. Hey, guys, guy. the women's strawweight division. Marina Rodriguez taking on Yan Xiao That's Nan. always incredible. Dude, is this a number one contender's fight? I Which love this one. Yes, yes, it is. Yes. 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 Especially if Rodriguez wins, it's a slam dunk case. Dude, this is a great ass fight. But so is the fight. teammates. Dude, how about that, this that fight's great. Okay, it so is. the next one, women's flyweight, is a huge personal grudge, grudge match. Oh, uh, yeah. Marina Moreau's taking on Maria Agapova. That's another, uh, yeah, another. another Jalen Turner feud. taking on Jamie Malarkey, out of Aust- another good fighter out of Australia. Yo, don't sleep on Jessica I against against your chick from France, okay? <laughs> uh, Manon Nic- Ferro. Nikolai uh, Negu Moreno, I guess. No, you can stop right there and get back to here we go, evil. Okay, here we go. Also taking on Kennedy <coughs> and Zech Kuyu. Uh, Tim Elliott taking on Tagir Ulanbekov, who had a good fight in his last outing but lost. Jessica I taking on Francis okay, Manoff. Okay, Luke, I want to stay right here. Hold on, stay Devante right here. Smith, Eric Gonzalez. Yeah, people Mike. have Wikipedia. It's cool. Luke, yeah, right. let me ask you this real quick. <laughs> oh, right. oh, Brian Kelleher, Let's Umar Gnumergamino. Our boy, Brian Kelleher. I love back in there. Yeah, boom. He's opening the show. Can Jessica yeah. I win this? Can she Can she grind out 15 minutes against your girl here from France? Uh, she lost like five in a row. I don't yeah. think so. I think... Um, I think it's going to be a big problem for him. And now Fiero, Fiero, Fiero has just a good jab. That's a pretty good movement. She's, all, she's, I, she's I uh, busy with the activity. It's a tough fight. It's Yo, tough Marina fight. Rodriguez is really good, but is she potentially great? Oh, dude, you reek of alcohol. We should put you behind the wheel of an automobile. I don't know about potentially great, but she is very good. I agree. <laughs> dude, we have to go. They're going to kill us. All right, all right. You're right, asking right. a lot from people. All right, all right. All right. That's Brian Campbell. That's the man in the hat, Chuck Mendenhall. I'm Luke Thomas. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thumbs up, subscribe, all that bullshit. We love you guys. Thank you again. Real enjoy, the, men. enjoy the fights. Real talk, okay? Like men do. All right, you guys want to try this for real? <laughs> that's, your, that's your number one dad joke. That's your number one dad joke. I've been saying it since ESPN. It's so good. Since ESPN. Yeah. I've been saying the same thing.